Hey y'all, my name is Ms. Kendall Rogers and I am going to be your agriculture teacher for the next nine weeks. Unfortunately, I'm not able to be with you guys today. I'm on a field trip for an FFA contest, but I didn't want you guys to get left behind and have to stay back another day on our safety guidelines before we get started on class when I come back. So this video that you guys are about to watch and have some questions throughout with Edpuzzle is gonna go over your syllabus and your lab rules, as well as just a couple things about the classroom. Of course, if you still have questions, I will gladly go over this again well, when I see you guys again on the next class block. But until then, I wanted to keep you in the loop. So to start off, I want you to look at your green sheet for my sixth graders and the blue sheet for my seventh graders. Each sheet is a little bit different, but we're gonna go over some of the similarities. So to start off with, at the top, we have my name, Miss Kay Rogers. We have the room number, which is A126. This is where you'll come every block that you have me, the opposite day you go to gym or health. And then under that, you see that there's my email. My email is very, very easy to remember because it's Kroger's, like the store, at ccps.us. No, I don't own stock. So the next thing underneath that is just a course description, which is all the big fancy words dealing with what we actually are gonna be doing in this class. Underneath of that is showing you the actual topics that we're going to discuss. Now, like I said, there are a couple of similarities and also some differences based on if you're in my sixth grade course or if you're a seventh grade course. So the big similarities is we're gonna learn about FFA, SAEs, and WPRs. Well, of course, we might not know or have a clue what either of those are. So FFA, just like my shirt says here, and what you see all around the classroom is the Future Farmers of America. And this is part of the class that we'll learn about, but also it's an extracurricular class or club that you guys can be part of now that you're in my course. And then you can do it for the rest of the year as well. And I'll talk more about that as we get into the lesson. SAEs, are another part of the content that both grade levels will learn, and they are supervised agricultural experiences. So think about things that you do every day, like taking out the trash, uh, mowing the grass, I mean, you know, might not do that every day, <laughs> um, taking care of an animal, feeding them, taking them for a walk, um, putting the dishes in the dishwasher. Those are things that, be con that can be considered an SAE because it's something that becomes a job or it can be a skill that helps you to be prepared for a job. And I'm gonna help you to set up a log so you know how many hours you've spent doing these activities. How much money would you have made doing this activity? Or maybe you're already making money. We all love making money, right? So this all ties into that last little component and that's workplace readiness. So workplace readiness is something you might have heard in another class before or may not have, but it's making sure that you are ready to be part of society making sure that you're gonna be a good human being and be productive, successful, serving others, serving yourself, and just being overall, like being a good part of the earth. So having skills like positive thinking and uh, people skills and public speaking skills, which none of us really like public speaking, but we have to do it. You know, we all have to talk at some point. So going from that workplace readiness skills, we're gonna learn about the 13 skills that we need to be a productive and um, successful person in our lives. And we're gonna bring in our career readiness. Um, you're gonna take surveys on what careers might work for you, what careers might not. So we'll go through those things there. The next bullet um, for my sixth graders, you're just gonna learn about Virginia agriculture. So the different things across Virginia, just like in this map right here behind me, and the different things that we do throughout Virginia. The Tidewater region, the Piedmont region, the Blue Ridge Mountains, the Valley and Ridge, and then our Appalachian Plateau. My seventh graders, on the other hand, you guys are gonna be learning about the whole United States and what we do across the United States when it comes to agriculture. So we're getting a little bit bigger and we'll see what the difference is between what we make here in Virginia, what's made in Maine, what's made in Hawaii, what's made in Florida, what's made in California, what's made in Utah and Indiana, and how are we able to get all these things at different times? I'm able to go buy pineapple right now from the store, but do we grow pineapples in Virginia? No. So we're gonna talk about those processes as well. The next one, for um, both classes, once again, is gonna be animal care. 
Now for my sixth graders, you guys are gonna learn about animal care overall. So learn about the competencies and the care and the management of animals. You're gonna learn about livestock and companion animals and just the overall general information dealing with them. My seventh graders, on the other hand, are gonna learn a little bit more in depth about each of those different types of livestock animals. While my eighth graders, they go over companion animals and all the different things dealing with that management. So livestock and companion animals are not in the same category, but they're both animals. And we both have to take care of them, they're dependent on us, but we use them for totally different situations. The next one is plant science. And for both courses, y'all are once again colliding here with this, um, and you're gonna be learning about what soil does, what plants do, what are the parts of a plant? Why do we need those parts? You know, the whole photosynthesis, remember? So we're gonna bring in that science side of things. Um, hint to why this is called agri-science, right? So we are gonna be planting plants. You'll see some plants around in the room. You'll even see some in the shop when we go into the grow lab, and I'll show that to you soon. Um, so you will be growing plants this year. The next one is conservation and natural resources. So you guys are gonna learn about the importance of what water can do for us, what air can do for us, what soil does for us, and all of our other natural and unnatural resources that we use here on Earth. Things from coal to gas to solar power to water power and how important those things are to us and why we need them, as well as just things that we could do with them. The last three and which everyone says is their favorite is the measurements, which maybe not might not be your favorite because we're not always good at fractions. Laboratory safety, which can be a little much, but we have to do it. And then the favorite one is work is woodworking. We will be going into the shop, which is through the big green door in the classroom, and you will be all building a woodworking project. So right now, wood is a little slim, and if you don't already know this, wood is very expensive right now. So right now, the project is simply building a birdhouse. So every single student that takes my course gets to take a birdhouse home. So every single one of you gets to build your own birdhouse and take it home. Next year when you have me, if you take my class, you'll have some other opportunities. Hopefully lumber will go down in price and we'll have some more opportunities. Step stools, toolboxes, birdhouses again, um, all kinds of different activities, making signs. So we'll have all those other options. But overall, this is what the class is really about. In the next section here in the video, I'm gonna go over grading policies. And then we'll just talk about what the next sheet is, which you both have a red sheet. So we'll go through that next. But I hope you're enjoying this and stay connected. So to talk about our grading policies and our grading scale, first off, I grade just like every other classroom does. A is 100 to 90, B is an 89 to um, an 80. That's all the same school-wide. But the big difference is what things you're graded on in my class. So the normal ones are gonna be projects, and then we have classwork. The other two that are a little different is workplace readiness skills and your safety tests. Now safety tests could just go into the same category as testing, but workplace readiness is very different. Now before I explain that though, there's something missing from my grading policy. If you haven't already noticed it, I don't give homework. So there is no grade for homework, but does that mean that you'll never have something you have to do at home? Not always. If you don't finish it in class, it does need to be done. Now do take advantage of your advisory time. Maybe you've got extra time in a class. Maybe it's even in this class that you have some extra time. Please make up your work. You have until the interim goes out and then until the report card goes out to, to get work turned in. I don't take any points off for it being late. I give you the grade that you deserve. So let's talk about workplace readiness. So we already said that it's the skills that you need to be productive, correct? So why am I being graded on this in class? Well, starting on the third class block that you guys have me, so not today while you watch this video, and not next class when I see you for the first time, but the class after that, I will start grading you on a one to five scale. Now, everybody starts every single day with a four, okay? A four is a 100. Well, I said, wait, there's a five. Well, five is extra credit. You can get extra credit points every single day, okay? So a four is perfect score. Four means you were on task, you did your work, you were productive, and you were successful, right? You're committed, successful, hold on, committed, motivated, and successful, just like we are with CMS, correct? So 
Are we on task? Are we committed, motivated, and successful? We can get a four for the day. If we go above and beyond that, maybe we help me help pass that papers. Maybe you help a, t a student that's uh, missing some work. Maybe you help somebody pick some up. You help me clean in the shop. Those kinds of things can get you a four. To switch to a three, we should all kind of know those are things where we're off task. We're not paying attention. Maybe I had to tell you to put your phone away. Maybe um, you weren't prepared for class. You didn't have your, your notes ready. You didn't have a pencil, whatever it might be. A two and a one is a bit more serious. A two means I've definitely had to have a conversation with you. I've maybe written you up um, or I've given you that massive warning. I'm ready to call home. And that's a 50. We have one more behind that, okay? That one means you're not in my class. You're leaving. I'm probably sending you to the front office. A one is a 25. And that can really damage your grade because remember, this is 20% of your overall grade. But remember, this can constantly change throughout the day, throughout the class block. Now, if we go down to a one, probably not gonna be able to fix that. But going up to a five can definitely happen even from a three within a class block. So remember, every single day we start fresh. Start with a four every single day and you choose where that goes, okay? And it can go in any direction of your choice. All right, so to finish off our blue, and or our green sheet. At the bottom, you see our safety policy. Please make sure you're following safety. Safety is number one. This is not a regular classroom. We have a shop, we have animals, we have tools, we have equipment. So we have to be very safe. If we can't be safe as a class or even as an individual, we can lose classroom privileges. We can even end up with textbook work. These lovely textbooks back behind me, I don't wanna have to use. I want them to keep dust on them. Don't make me have to tell you to get out a textbook and write the definitions, okay? So we don't want those. At the bottom of your sheet, you'll see where it says that you read, you understand, and you agree to these requirements. You need to sign this, and then somebody at home needs to sign this. These two things right here, okay? For my sixth graders, this one, and my seventh graders, this one, this is gonna be your first grade for my class. Perfect 100 just for turning in the signed sheet, okay? So please put these in your backpack to go home with you so that they can be signed and then bringing them back to next class. All right, so now I want you to look at this red sheet that we have. Everybody has the red sheet. At the top you can see one, not only is this red, it's also in caps and it says agriculture lab and class safety. Like we said, this is not a regular room, okay? I have a huge shop that you guys are gonna be working in. We also have the classroom, we even work outside. So you have to be aware of our safety rules and regulations. So we're gonna go through each of these, talk about their importance, and remember, if you have any questions, just let me know when you see me guys next class. So number one says safety is everyone's concern. It's not just my job to keep you safe, and it's not just your job to keep you safe. The job is for you to keep yourself safe, me safe, and everyone else. Yes, I need your help keeping me safe as well, okay? We wanna be aware of our surroundings. The second one says due to the potential hazards not only in the classroom, but also in the shop, and also because it is a school-wide rule. We need to be aware of not having food, gum, drinks, or water bottles and candy in the shop. In the classroom, I don't mind you having a water bottle. Of course, please make sure that it has a lid on it so it can be closed, but we don't need these things getting in our way, especially not in the shop. We don't want a tripping hazard, a spilling hazard, whatever it might be. In the classroom, we wanna be aware of not having food and candy and things because we have animals and we don't need more critters coming in. Number three says, no student is allowed in my office without permission. I have two offices. One office is in the classroom, you see it off to the side, and then the other office is in the shop and it's also off to the side. You are not allowed to go into those rooms without permission. Part of the reason is because, guess what? It's my office, right? It's my space. I might ask you to go in and grab something, that's fine, you've been given permission. The next one says that you are not allowed to enter any wood room, work room, or any shop cabinet without permission. So just because you've passed your safety test, just because you turn in this signed red sheet, does not mean you can go wherever you want, open whatever door you want, go snooping, whatever. You might find my secret stuff, okay? I don't have anything secret though, just tools and things that could hurt you. So we need to be aware of our surroundings. The next one says all students will, un will be quiet when announcements are made by the instructor, myself, or the intercom, okay? They don't make announcements in the middle of class just to say hi, 
okay? They make these announcements for a real reason, for an importance or for an emergency. So when those announcements come on, I need you to be quiet. I don't know what they're gonna say. You don't know what they're gonna say. So we need help. We need to be able to help each other to hear those announcements. And then when it comes to listening to the instructor, that should be common sense. You need to be able to listen to me when I am talking. The next one says you need to be in your seat when the bell rings. Just because the bell rings doesn't mean that you're dismissed. Do not stand next to the door. Now, this is something that's a bit of a pet peeve for me. Some people say, oh, you're like every other teacher, but don't crowd up around a closed door. That's a safety hazard. Not only with that, I try to make sure that you can get out of here on time to move on to your next class. Sixth graders, I know you have a long way to go, get, get across the halls and you gotta go upstairs. My seventh graders, y'all have the luck of going up these wonderful stairs over here. So you're not as far, but still, I want you to get out of the classroom as quick as you can as well. I want you to do it safely and calmly. So when the bell rings, yes, if we're still working on something, pack it up and get on out of here. But don't be crowding around the door just because we're done early and you wanna be able to leave, okay? Plus, it kinda hurts my feelings if you wanna rush out of my class. Next one says, you must come prepared for work. All you need for my class is a pencil, appropriate clothing for the day, and a good attitude. I will give you everything else you need. And if you need a pencil on my desk, you can see that pink drawer thing. It has pencils and highlighters in it, okay? They're always there. You can use them whenever you need to. Along with this, you will need a folder for my class. I'll explain a little bit more to you when I see you in class, but you need a folder so that you can keep all of these papers in it. Every note sheet I give you, all your blueprints, I need you to have a safe place to keep them. And we're gonna keep them in the classroom. Next one says you need to be quiet during tests and quizzes. Common sense, we need to be quiet when we're taking a test or quiz. And if you have a question, raise your hand. Next, it says, please conduct yourself in a safe manner in the classroom, as well as in the shop, okay? Just because we're in the shop doesn't mean we don't follow classroom rules. Just because we're outside doesn't mean we don't follow those classroom rules. We have to be safe and be prepared and be acknowledgeable about what we're doing. Next one says no running. This is a concrete floor. It's not gonna make friends with your face. Next one says no loud talking or disruptive actions. Okay, I should be the only one that is at a high volume. Okay, remember that level zero, level one, level two. Okay, none of you should be going up above me. Okay, unless you're like hurt, injured, dying, or well, if you're dead, you can't really make any noise, but someone else can make the noise for you, right? Okay, but we don't need to be yelling and screaming unless something is truly, truly wrong. The next one is no horseplay, okay? Um, that's pretty much common sense. We don't need to be goofing around because somebody could get hurt, okay? The next one says no foul language, okay? I used to say, okay, if you don't use that language with your parents, you shouldn't use it with me, but apparently there are some students that do talk that way to their parents, okay? I do not appreciate it. Other students do not appreciate it. Don't use that foul language or just dirty language around me or around any other students, okay? I'm not saying I'm perfect. I'm not saying that I don't use it, but when I'm in this building and when I'm, when I'm with students, I'm able to stop myself. Learn to think before you speak. Now I get it, if you smash your finger, okay, and you get hurt, just like my arm here, you can see this giant bruise, right? Okay, I definitely didn't keep my cool, right? Okay, that's understandable. You smash your hand with a hammer, I get it. You're gonna say something to that hammer, but don't say it to me, don't say it to another student, okay? be aware of that situation, okay? You have, you have control over your words. The next one on the front and the last, or well, there's two more on the front. Next one says that cell phones, iPods, iPads, and other things like that should not be open or out unless a teacher says so. I don't mind you listening to music when we're doing certain activities in class, we're coloring, cutting, and pasting. You can listen to music. When you're done with the test, you can pull out your Chromebook, pull out your phone, play some Clash of Clans, whatever you'd like, okay? Um, but I shouldn't hear your phone, okay? Put in your headphones if you have to, okay? Um, and just be aware of your surroundings. And when we're in the shop, cell phones are not allowed, okay? We gotta have our attention on what we're doing. The last one on the front says that you need to abide by school rules at all times. Like I said before, just because we're in the shop, just because we're in a classroom, just because we're outside, doesn't mean we don't have to follow those school rules in the code of conduct, okay? So if we flip the page over, okay? you can see the breakdown of the differences between our grades. So sixth and seventh grade, you guys actually only have four safety tests, okay? Only four tests. You're gonna be graded on general safety, which is common sense, 
Outdoor safety, we're going to talk about snakes, spiders, ticks, mosquitoes, and poisonous plants. Fire safety, because things could catch on fire in this shop. And then tool ID. You need to be able to identify the tools that you're going to be using in this classroom. Okay, you can't just look at me and say, hey, hand me that whatchamajig. Okay, now I might understand what you mean when you say hand me that whatchamajig, but I need to know exactly which whatchamajig you're talking about. <laughs> Next, underneath that, you see the explanations for our workplace readiness skills. Remember we talked about we start off every single day with a four. We can move to a five, a three, a two, or even a one if we're not going to be on a good, you know, good scale for the day. But every single day, we get a new, a new day. So we start with a new four. Underneath of that tells you some different things that could happen if you get a two or a one. Maybe even a three, depending on the severity. Okay, I could just give you a warning. We could have a teacher conversation. I could have a parent-teacher conference with you. We could talk to a principal, administration. Um, it could be a counselor. We could have a parent conference um, or even other things. Maybe I make you have to do something you just don't want to do. Maybe you got to write definitions that day. Maybe you have to, I don't know, um, clean out the chicken coop, which some kids like to do. So it's not always a, a bad thing. But we need to be aware of the situation and what things come with those consequences, okay? Underneath, once again, we see right here, you need to print your name, you need to sign your name. Not everybody knows how to do their signature, so just do it your best. And then someone at home needs to print and sign their name as well. This is your second grade for my class, okay? So easy 100, okay? Sign this, bring it back. Please put this in your book bag right now so that it can go home with you, okay? If you have any questions about this sheet or the other sheet, write it down, okay? Write it on this sheet if you have to. And when you give it back to me next class for a grade, I'll be able to answer that question for you, okay? I'm always here if you have any questions or concerns, so talk to me. Thank you for watching. We've got one more thing to go through, so I hope you're sticking in there with me and enjoying this, okay? I can't wait to meet you guys in person. All right, so the last thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about was just things in my classroom. My room is very different, if you haven't already noticed. And I know you're begging or probably pleading to touch animals, go see a room, move around, those kinds of things. I promise you when I get back, you'll meet all of the critters. But I wanted you to at least know a little bit about everything in the room before we got started. So, you guys are going to get to tour around with me, pardon the movement of the camera, but I really hope you enjoy this part, okay? Hang in there. All right, so when you walk into my room, a couple things to remember. Take your seat at your desk, okay? We do have standing desks in the back, okay? We do have stools up with them, but if you need it, okay? This is the seat you have for the entire nine weeks, okay? Please keep sitting in the seat that you're in unless I tell you you need to move, okay? These lovely little green things that are on the bottom of the chairs, they are fidgets. Now, not every single chair has one. I do have more that I can put on if needed, but it's just something for you to bounce your feet on if you enjoy that type of activity. You don't have to use it if you don't want to. Second, please use the proper trash cans for any items you need or don't want to don't want to use anymore. Okay. Third, if we remember the pink box, always there for pencils and highlighters if you ever need it. Don't be afraid to come grab one. You don't even have to ask. Everything we're doing for the school day, okay, or for the class block will be here on the board. You can see right now it says that my sixth graders and my seventh graders are working on sanding their projects and then woodworking skills, okay? So that's always there for you to see what we're doing for the school day. Along with this, okay, in the classroom over here in the far side, this is where you guys are gonna be putting your folders. My sixth graders, your folders go in these two bottom boxes right here, okay? If you're A day, you're on this row. If you're B day, you're on this row. Share your pocket with one other person, so two people per folder, or two pockets, okay? My seventh graders go on this row here, okay? So A day, seventh grade is here. B day, seventh grade is here. The top row is my eighth graders, okay? If you're turning in any assignments to me, purple is for sixth grade, orange is for seventh grade, green is for eighth grade, okay? If you're turning in an assignment that needs to be graded, it goes in those buckets, okay? Now, while we're over here in this corner, let's talk about our first little critter buddy or our classroom pet. We actually have two pets in this in this uh, uh, environment over here. So if we look, there he is. So this is Cap'n, okay, like Captain, okay. 
and he is a betta fish. We also have a snail in here and oh, he's over here on the far side if we can see him. And this is Crunch. Crunch is a black racer snail. Okay, and I wonder if I can actually get it so you can see his little, nope, he's turned around all the way on the far back, but you can kind of see him moving around. So he's the guy in there doing all the work to keep this tank clean, okay? So this is Captain and Crunch, okay? Above that, just so you know, some other supplies if you ever need it. Pencil sharpener, you can use it whenever needed. Um, scissors, glue, highlighters, more pencils, and even rulers and equipment over here as well, okay? Moving forward, okay, our textbooks, which remember, we hope we don't ever have to use, correct? Okay, we don't want to have to use those. On this back wall, we have our three little fuzz balls. These are the guinea pigs. And give me a second, and I will let you guys meet them. All right. So this is Lucy. Lucy is all white with a little bit of brown on her. She is a guinea pig, okay? You're welcome to have them at your desks every once in a while in the end of, at the end of class if we've had a good class block. Okay, so this is Lucy. Next, we have Skylar. Now, Skylar's a little chunky. She's the one that's got the Neapolitan looking colors on her. She looks like the, the mixed ice cream. Okay, try not to jump, ma'am. Um, and she is the one that definitely likes to eat all the snacks. So this is Skylar. Last but not least, we have Felicia. Felicia is the one that has more of the black to her colors. She's the little spoiled feisty one, hence her name being Felicia. She likes to nibble, so please be careful. Now, one thing to remember, if you don't want an animal to bite you, where do you not put your hands? In their mouth. Okay, we feed them carrots and apples. If you ever get them from the cafeteria, you're welcome to bring them to class or drop them off and we can feed them to them as treats. So this is Felicia. Next, if we move our way around the room, we have Mr. Wilson. And Mr. Wilson is our bunny. This is Mr. Wilson. Wilson is a Rex bunny. He is spoiled rotten and just still a little bit feisty. He does like to hop around on the tables though and go say hi to people. Right now he's just sniffing things out. So you'll see him hopping around the classroom every once in a while. Do remember he is going to have teeth as well as fingernails so he could scratch you or bite you just as the guinea pigs would, okay? So please be aware of him as well. He can eat carrots and apples also, so we can always bring things for him to have. So this is Wilson. Hey. The next animal in our classroom is Marsha. Marsha is a corn snake, okay? And I will get her out, but she likes to stay down in that little hole back in there in her log. I'll get her out so you can see her. Marsha is a corn snake. She is 28 inches long. She eats mice that are dead. Yes, they are frozen. I have to heat them up for her um, in warm water. And she does not bite, okay? Now she can bite you, but she does not have teeth, okay? Um, but she is also not venomous, okay? So this is Marsha. And you're welcome to hold her or even just touch her, uh, but it's not mandatory, just like every other animal. Next, we have a surprise visitor that hasn't been named yet because we're not sure of the gender, but this little uh, buddy here was found in the band room not too long ago. Come here. Whoop. You're too fast. There we go. So this is a baby garter snake. You can see the very bright belly. There's the belly. Next, 
but not least, we have the shop. Now, we're still talking about critters, right? But I just want you to see how big this shop is, okay? And you'll be able to see it in person when I come back. But this is where we do all of our woodworking and plant science. But we have six other very special critters back here. First, we have Voldemort, who's the rooster, and Valerie, his wife. She's got an egg back there right now, actually, as you can see. But they are modern game blue-red chickens. Next, we have Betsy and Ross. They are coach, uh, Cornish hens and roosters. So this is Ross, the male. This is Betsy, the female. They're both little fat chickens. They're the ones that you're used to eating off the grill. And then next, we have Henry and Lily. They are bantams, which means that they're not gonna get any bigger than they already are. And she is a blue modern game, and he is a black modern game. They are young still, but that is as big as they're going to get because they are bantams. All six of these guys can be held, okay? We do take them outside to go into the coop as well on pretty days. But that is our classroom. Hope you've enjoyed this. If you have any other questions, just let me know.